My name is Mary Claire Enright, and today I will be giving a lecture on my favorite painting, the Arnolfini Wedding Portrait. I must admit, this is not the first time I've given this lecture. I originally gave it at my dining room table last summer. The audience consisted of my mom and four of my sisters, and the occasion was that we were really, really bored and could not, for the life of us, think of anything to do. My mom was the first one to come up with something to do. She had been reading a book about Russian political prisoners who were being transported from a prison in Moscow, where they experienced solitary confinement in rooms too small to lay down in, to a work camp in Siberia. In order to pass the time on the train and keep away thoughts of hunger, the prisoners held a mini lecture series. Because they were political prisoners and had a wide array of jobs before their incarceration, each prisoner could stand up and give a two-minute speech on a new topic he had mastery over to the rest of the train. So my mom suggested that each person at my dining room table give a presentation to the rest of us. My mom gave a lecture on torts, my sisters gave lectures on tennis in New Zealand, and I gave a lecture on the Arnolfini wedding portrait, which I will relate to you now. This painting is an oil on wood and comes from the early Renaissance movement in Europe. It was painted by Jan van Eyck in 1434 in Flanders and now resides in the National Gallery in London. I admire the work's meticulous handling of paint and great concentration to minute detail. The work is obviously a portrait of a couple, but the meaning of the work has come into question in recent years. It was traditionally assumed to be the wedding portrait of the merchant Giovanni Arnolfini and his wife, but it could also be a memorial to Arnolfini's wife after her death. It could signify a contract of betrothal between the man and the woman. But I think the most interesting interpretation comes from historians who believe the work serves as a conference of legal and business privileges from Arnolfini to his wife during an absence, because during this time, women would have needed the permission of their husbands to keep their estates in order. The symbols and the imagery in the work highlight a juxtaposition between the secular and the religious. It focuses on the role of marriage as a sacrament, and also the role of each partner in the marriage. To begin, let's look at the candle right here on the chandelier. This burning candle represents the customary Flanish tradition of a burning candle on the first night of a wedding. You can see the shoes on the foreground right here and the figures themselves shoeless to show that they are standing on holy ground to remind the audience of the sanctity of marriage. I see the religious themes in this work reaffirmed by the prayerful pose of the groom and the prayer beads that are hanging in the back by the mirror. There is a statue of St. Margaret, the patron saint of childbirth, in the corner right here. And the dog at the woman's feet typically represents fidelity in art. But I think it serves to show the viewer that the artist has specific intentions um, in painting this work. It's to remind each one of us that a good marriage and good parenting stems from the unbreakable faithfulness between spouses. The position of the two figures also lends meaning to the work and adds uh, an interesting controversial element to the work today, as the man standing near the window symbolizes his role as someone who makes his way in the world, and the wife on the inside is the homemaker. The wife's dress is pulled up to symbolize childbirth, although she herself is not pregnant. Her beauty, which the author believes to represent the ideal feminine beauty, comes from her fertility. I don't think that the detail and the symbolism in this work necessarily detracts from the beauty of the work as a whole, but rather it's the artist faithfully representing his subjects and his time. The work includes a lot of the painter's personality. One interesting note is that on the back, above the mirror here, the painter has written Jan van Eyck was here and not that Jan van Eyck made this. The signature is different and fun. Van Eyck enjoyed straying from the normal signage of the time. And the work represents Van Eyck's particular interest in the effects and manipulation of light, seen in the gleam of this brass chandelier and the light reflected off the wall by the prayer beads. I think that these elements of Van Eyck, his interests and his unique style, make the work more personable, more interesting, and more beautiful. The detail of the work is also just astounding. I love his use of the rich colors, contrasting the green of her dress with the red of the room, and the figures really stand out to me. I think one of the most fascinating things about this painting is the mirror in the background. If you look closely here, the artist has meticulously painted the stations of the cross around the mirror, and the mirror itself reflects the back of the couple and shows another couple entering into the room. I think the mirror is inviting the viewers into the room to become part of the portrait, to become part of the celebration and to recognize the sanctity of marriage. 
The work itself is a testament to the skill and the aptitude of the artist, who shows his mastery over the materials and the subject of the work. Before I took an art history class, I would have never been able to notice the great detail, nor been able to appreciate this work as a masterpiece. I would have seen the painting online or in a national gallery, thought it was beautiful, and moved on. However, in learning and in studying art history, I was able to move from a state of ignorance to one in which I could love, evaluate, and grapple with the work. Once I learned about this painting, I was able to effectively communicate about its beauty, about the truth that it holds to my family. And whether on a train to Siberia that will meet passengers with utter suffering, or sitting around a dining room table, our ability to learn about the beautiful things, about the interesting things in life, allows us to hope. To hope that the train ride is shorter, to hope that we will finally think of something interesting to do, and to hope in the beauty that is before us. Thank you.